Welcome to Peter Martin Straight Talk. I'm delighted to say that my guest on the show is a one-to-one -one with Paul Lambert. Uh, started out his career all those years ago at St Mirren and, of course, uh, Motherwell. And let's not forget uh, Borussia Dortmund and Celtic and played for Scotland with distinction as well. Um, have I missed out any clubs, Paul? No, that's me. That's, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> uh, it's not a bad career when you look back on it. Um, if somebody had said to you all those years ago, by the way, You'll be in a Champions League final, um, you'll be in an historic Celtic side, uh, you'll have played at a, a major tournament for Scotland, you're a bit in the Randolph. No, I, I, listen, I was lucky. I, I, I always think you need luck in football, Peter. I think you need that wee bit of right time, right moment, playing with the right guys, having the right right manager. And The, the biggest claim to fame is probably I was, I was one of the questions on the chase, I think. I think that was, a, <laughs> it was the first uh, British player to win it with a foreign club. It was myself, and I never realised that until I saw the Chase's question. And uh, if you get things like that, you think, well, yeah, you done all right. Yeah, absolutely. And and did you did you ever was there a moment? Are you the type of person who looks back and uh, you know when we look back at that Champions League final and you were in the colours of Dortmund? Was there a moment, or is there a moment in your life where you look back on the actual day, the event? And, and think about it, or were you one of those people that the career was going that fast that you just had to keep looking forward? Yeah, because I've never watched the Champions League final back. Never? Never. Never ever watched it. I know the goals. I've seen the goals. I've never watched a rerun of the whole game, the 90 minutes of it. I always think your best memorabilia is your brain. Hopefully I can keep that for as long as I can, because I think that's, nobody can ever take that away. Everything else can, is a material really, that, that can go. But the, the actual great thing, I can always think back and say, OK, i done that, and if I go to Dortmund or whatever, we have, we have stars on the street, what we'd achieved and things, which is nice, so that's always a nice thing to, to see. And I go back to clubs that I had a special bond with, which I think is always nice to go back to. It's a strange uh, outlook on it because, uh, you know, your teammates, mm. all of your teammates can't watch Seville. Mm. They just can't watch yeah. that UEFA Cup final. You, yeah. and, and you, do you fit into that category as well? I've never watched that. Yeah, never watched that. Painful, painful and regret. I think it's the biggest things. I think for for us, um, I, I think it'd have been it'd have been lovely to, to win a, a, another European trophy. Coming from Glasgow, there's not too many Scottish people that, that can say they won two European trophies. I played in two European finals, lost one, won one. For us as a club, it'd have been unbelievable. I, that would think catapulted us. For me, the Lions was always going to be the best. I don't think the Lions will ever be touched until Celtic won a Champions League or a European Cup. But I think if we'd won a year for a Cup, we'd have been that era or that team would have been up. No, I'm not saying level with them at all. I'm saying maybe just below them. And the great teams at Celtic have had in the past, but if you get a European title under your belt, you'll be classed as one of the special teams. And yet, with that, the Celtic supporters mm. look on that team that made it all the way to Seville. They look on them with the same. I don't know. It's not. <clears throat> it's not the same level of the 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 Lisbon Lions as you mentioned, but they certainly have the same feeling of <clears throat> you are something special. Mm. You know, you're revered by the Celtic supporters, mm. even in that ultimate failure. I know from a player's perspective, you want to win it. Mm -hmm. And and you brush that aside if you don't, but you're still held in high esteem by them. Do you sense that? Yeah, I, I think um, I said it the other day in an interview that when you play for Celtic, it, you ultimately do leave the club, but that never leaves you. You're always in that category. You're a Celtic player, and if it's even better club when you win things at it. I take your point where people say I was in Seville in, in 2003. It was great, and I, I travelled. How I got there, I walked there, I got there, and, and the, the stadium was never big enough to hold the Celtic support. And the great thing about Celtic is the, it's an unbelievable club, really, really great club when you're when you're winning. The hard times are, are, are difficult at times. You need special players to play there with a strong mentality to do it. But I think the the, the club is in a great this moment. It's in a great place. It's, it's strong. It's got the support behind it. And if you can achieve success there, when Dear oh dear, that's that's some place. But Seville was was a sore one because of what it was. Yeah, um, we'll touch on it a wee bit later uh, in our chat. But let me let me take you back all those years um, when when you're setting out. Um, 
Was there a belief when you, at a young age that you could make it in, as a professional footballer? No, no, no. Alec Muller took me when I was 15 to Dumbarton. Alec took me, I signed with Ricky McFarlane. I don't know if people remember Ricky, but Ricky took me, uh, uh, signed me when I was 13 and they left. I think St Mirren just playing Feyenoord. And Hullet and Croy from that were playing. Yeah, and, uh, I think McAvenny was in that St Mirren side. Frank was, he was. And um, I signed the S-form, schoolboy form when I was 13. And I played for Scotland under 15s down at Nottingham Forest ground against England. And uh, Aston Villa wanted me to go. Alec Muller got wind of it and came flying out to my mum and dad's house and said he's not going anywhere because we've trained him for two years and we want him to sign with St Mum. And I was happy to sign with St Mum because it was a great club. And um, Ali, um, Ali and <coughs> Drew Jarvey and Martin Ferguson, I always thank God and, that they were my coaches when I was growing up because they taught me great habits and, and looked after me. And uh, uh, Ali took me down to the Dumbarton game at Boghead, which is probably non-existent anymore. And he uh, he put me on the bed, but he never put me on. He took me to, uh, to Fir Park and he threw me in when I was 16 against my other one in a first team game, in a league game. We were doing 1-0 and I came on. I was playing as if I was playing in your back garden here. I <laughs> just wasn't caring, I was just playing. And we won the game 2-1. And ever since then I never looked back. And Alec left and Alec Smith came in. He kept me in the team, played me in the cup, Scottish Cup final at 17. And then... I thought that, that, that's it. That's football. Works easy. That's, yeah. This is easy at seventeen because you, you don't have a care. You don't. You play with freedom. And winning's easy. Did you think this is the, the this medals is, will come? This is going to happen all the time. <laughs> then you then you get to start whacking the face with reality. You think, oh, this is this is a bit different. But I played in a. a do you know what? I played in a brilliant St. Mon side. When I look back on it, I, I'm not talking about as, as players. I'm talking characters. Billy Abercrombie. I had Jimmy Rooney, I had Peter Mackey, I had Gardner Spear, I had Tony Fitzpatrick. And Frank was just leaving to go to, um, to West Ham. So I was only there for a, yeah. for a few weeks. Stephen, you had McGarvey. McGarvey was, was brilliant with me. Um, uh, Stevie Clark, Campbell Money, Jimmy Stewart. Guys that I look back on and they think, do you know what? Thank God they were in that dress room. Yeah. Because when I never, if I, if I, if I stepped out of line or, or I'd, maybe their, their boots weren't cleaned, they let me have it and go, hey, do you think they're good enough? I think they were spotless. They would turn it around as a wee bit of dirt on the back <laughs> of the boat and that, get them cleaned. Yeah. But it was a brilliant upbringing. Character building? Oh, listen, with, without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, that was the best character building. And you'd go home, my mum would say, say to you, hey, how was training, son? And I'd seen things and, and what they were doing to us and things like that. I, I thought, fine, mum, haven't fine, no problem. They would never tell your mum what was going on in that dressing room. Character building. Unbelievable. I saw Billy Abercrombie getting sent off three times in one game <laughs> against Motherwell. So he did. I think the referee was uh, Louis, was it Louis Thau at one time, is that his name? And he sent Abba off three times. Abba got a 12 game ban. So he did. He sent him off three times. He gave him three red cards yeah. in the one game. And him and McGarvey didn't go on, did they? And, and McGar <laughs> McGarvey, God rest him, McGarvey, was, listen, you know, what a player. Oh, fantastic. When I, when I started at St Mum, Alec, he put me up front with Frank. And Frank used to just say to me, just run by me and I'll find you. And sure God, he did. Yeah. He, he, his body can get into angles that I'd never seen a body again. He, he was just a brilliant, brilliant as young ones, you know. Yeah. And uh, did you play in the middle of the park with Ian Ferguson? Was he? Fergie, yeah. Me, Fergie, and, and um, Fergie, in the cup final, Fergie played up front with Kenny. Kenny McDowell, another brilliant guy. Um, it was myself, Abba, and Brian Hamill. Yeah. Were in the middle of the pitch. And what was the message from Alex Smith? Because I thought he was a very. I don't think he gets the recognition he deserves yeah. as a as a manager when you look at his career in, in Scottish football. What was? Can you remember what your yeah. role was against Dundee United? Because they were favourites. They were they were they were a hell of a side. They were. If you look at their team, they got the UEFA Cup final. And, yeah. And just lost it to Malmo. Um, they'd beaten Barcelona in the same thing. Ali, he used to come up and, and this is true because you asked me if I can remember. He would just say to me, "Just go and play." That was his words. He would never tell me anything. I think I'd already learned that with Alec Muller. Yes. And Drew Jarvie and Martin Ferguson. So you knew your role? Aye. And, and Alec and, and Drew and Martin were, as I said, I think my lucky stars were my coach because without them, I don't think I'd have made it. 
we foot day three because he taught me the great habits and where to go and how to play off the back foot and how to look over my shoulder before I receive it and things like that. So they, they taught me that when I was growing up at 12, 13, 14, 15. Alex Matthews to come up and just, just go and play. And as soon as he said that, that gave me the freedom to go and go and, and at 17, you don't, you don't, you, you just play. That's what you actually do. You just think, well, I know where to, I know where to go in relation to where the ball is going to be in the pitch. I know if the ball's there, I can come in here. If it's on that side, I can go there. And you like to think you'd had a good first touch of the ball. Yeah, uh, and when you win that uh, Scottish Cup final, it, it, in essence, it's the first stage of what I think is a, it's a brilliant career for you because there are various stages in your career where you become <clears throat> an integral part of the history and the celebration of a club in 87 yeah. for St Mirren to win the Scottish Cup against the Red Hot favourites and as you say you know that United side had oh. some top players in it they were as I said you look at United Malpass Neary Hegarty Sturrock Eamon Bannon played Ian Redford played yeah. they, they were they were proper side on the United at that, that time and to go against that in, in a cup final was, was brilliant and I think I could be wrong I think is that the only thing St Mirren's won won the uh, it's the, it's the first, it's the only Scottish all eleven team I think to have won it. Uh, all guys for for the same uh, country, someone. Yeah. Uh, which was which was incredible. So um, it was just an unbelievable achievement for someone to have to have won the Scottish Cup at that time. How did the move away come about for you? I was I was I was made, listen. It's great in your career because sometimes in your own career you don't visualise yourself playing really bad. But you do. You look back and you think, Jesus, I, I deserve to be left out there or I didn't perform. And um, I, I lost my way a wee bit. I, was, I wasn't I was even playing well at St. Mirren through my own fault. Just kind of get a grip on my form. And Jimmy, Jimmy Bowen, actually I could have signed for Dundee United, believe it or not. Yeah. And the, the funny story about that. You've got to get a nine-year deal. With, with a 15-year <laughs> option. And, uh, <laughs> do you know, we Jim was brilliant. Um, he... Uh, he invited me up to Tanadice and I, went, I drove up, this is true, and uh, I knocked at the door at Tanadice, but there was no answer at the door. And it, that split second gave me a moment of, I'm not sure this is right for me. Anyway, I go and meet Mr McLean and um, I go into his office, he says, how are you doing, son? I went, I'm OK. He said, uh, it, like you sign, the season starts on Saturday, this is a Thursday. He said, I've got only one day to decide. He went, yeah, yeah, one day to decide. He said, let us know. So he told me the, the deal, and I know you're making fun of it there, it's, uh, drives down the road. What was the deal? It was something like an eight year contract, <laughs> a 15 year option. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I drives down the road, I thought, oh, I'm going to go for it. This was, this was on the Friday. Would you have spoken to your dad? No, yeah, right. So when I was driving down, I had my head, I'm, I'm going to uh, sign. So, uh, so I, my dad, I spoke to my dad, I said, what do you think? I said, I said, I don't, I don't know. I said, I own the car down here. I was thinking, I'm going to do it. And I said, go with your gut instinct. And I went, right. I go to St Mun. Jimmy, Jimmy Bones, the, the manager at the time. And uh, uh, I goes in on Friday morning and I got my suit and that on. And Jimmy says, uh, what are you thinking? I went, I don't know. He said, I'll tell you what to do. Says, Put your training kit on. And Love Street at that time, do you remember? The yeah, big I remember ash? it, yeah. He says, do one lap of that. And I walk and come back in and tell me your answer. And I walked in the ash and I go to the, the Celtic Rangers end. And I went, I'm not going to go. I walked into the tunnel and Jimmy, Jimmy was there and he said, what are you going to do? I went, I'm not going. He went, right, okay, great, I'll tell him you're not, you're not coming. But two weeks later, Jimmy pulled me again and said, Tommy's asked to sign your Motherwell. And I went, right, okay. He said, but the only hinges in one thing. Jim Gardner's got to sign for St Mun. If he doesn't sign for St Mun, the deal's off. So I've got your mother, we'll meet, obviously, the other Mr McLean. And uh, he says, Jim Gardner's got to sign for St Mun, or else the deal's off. I went, I know. Jim signs for St Mun. At that point, I was like, I'm definitely going to sign here. Without any hesitation, I thought, I'm going to sign here. And I tell you what, I walked into a brilliant mother side. Yeah. They were brilliant, good guys, and a really, really good team. What was the team? So Dykstra was in goal, right. we had Rab Shannon, we had Neil Drag, Krivospic, 
at the, at the back with Brian Martin or Chris McCart. We played a back three. Yep. Brad McKinnon was left left wing back. He went on to 20 inch, could he? He did. Yep. And then when I first went, it was Jamie Dolan, brilliant, brilliant player, Marcel. And then we had Phil Donald was just about to go. Uh, I think it was Phil there the first year. I think Phil was going to sign for Celtic. Right. And then uh, Billy Davis came in, brilliant. And then with Tommy Coy and Dougie Arnott. Yeah, that was the kind of mainstay of it, and it was we finished third, we finished second, and then, then the last season I left, we finished about eighth or something. But a Motherwell team that were went all the way to with Rangers. And did you go? Did you go to that Motherwell team, having f- that feeling of you weren't really up to it? St. Mirren, you dropped off, or was well, it? Doubt, or was yeah. it? Well, why were they so keen to sign you then? <clears throat> I, I think I think Tommy, he was great. Tommy McLean, he, he was he was brilliant, and. Um, uh, in town for society, they were really good with me. And uh, Tommy said, Wilson, come here. Whether he thought Jim tried to sign me and thought, well, but I think Willie McLean had seen me playing yeah. and thought, well, this kid's lost his way a wee bit. But there's something there. There's something there. Right. Uh, and then they they took me and um, and then it just kind of slowly but surely escalated from there. And what year was that that you signed there? 93. 93 I signed with Motherwell. Yeah. And it's amazing that some people will not believe that you're in a side mm. that is actually pushing Rangers. It was. It, we were neck and neck with them. Because Celtic were in some disarray at that well, point. Celtic were at Hamden. And I think everybody knew that wasn't going to suit Celtic because it was too far away and the support and things like that. And maybe smaller teams are going to Hamden and they're only filling a section of the, of the, of the stadium. Yeah. So it kind of hurt Celtic that a little bit, I think. And um uh, we we'd beaten Celtic at Fir Park. We drew with them at Hamden as well a couple of times, and so we had that. But Rangers were obviously the team that were going for the or, or the stronger team at that, at that point. And we went neck and neck with them, and then we lost at Fir Park. It was a midweek, and we were neck and neck. I think it was around about the March time, and they won. They get they won the game, and we lost, and they started to go away from us. Yeah. Then Big Alec came in, Alec McLeish came in, and we finished second, and we went toe to toe again with Rangers. Until Celtic obviously came back to, came back to Park. Did you have European football at that point? We did. Yeah. Uh, we played. Um, yeah, that's when I played against Dortmund. Yeah. And and that changed the whole. And you mentioned the special players. Then I think for for people of a generation, they'll look at the special players you mentioned for Saint Mirren. Was there a player in the Motherwell side that you looked at and thought, I mean, you're still developing, you're getting mm, better. Yeah. Was there a player in that Motherwell side you thought, Oof, what a guy he is? Me a drag. I always think me me drag looked like Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> the, the actor. And you probably yeah, know who that is. Yeah. So I thought me drag always looked like him. Never broke sweat. Yeah. And he was honestly he was chiselled. He was he was like manic when there. He was yeah. proper <laughs> proper chiselled me dragging. Never dead calm, dead calm. Yeah. He was actually a nice guy as well. A brilliant, lovely guy. Yeah. I, and God rest him. I love I, I love Jamie Dolan. I loved him. McGrillen and people like that who are sadly no longer here. And Coop. Yep. Coop was there for, for, a, for a short spell and, 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 and left. They, they were all... They, do you know what? It's really sad that some of the guys are not here anymore because it was a really good team. Yep. And they, it was just a special special time. I really enjoyed my time at Motherwell. It just the way it ended, probably. Yeah, and, and, and now this is the moment where I think so many footballers and people who are fans will not believe when we're discussing your story. How can a player who, you know... At times, I looked at you, and I remember because I was a young reporter at the time. Rubbish. Uh, no, no, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Better men than me wouldn't say that. Um, how can a player who actually has played and impressed and played in a really good Motherwell team? I remember you're actually. It was almost like you were touting yourself about, thinking, mm. I, "I'm trying to get a club here," and everybody's mm. going. Who, why, how the hell are people not taking a chance on Paul yeah, Lambert? Yeah. I mean, what were the circumstances that suddenly you're in a situation where you're heading out of the mother old door mm. and you're basically turning turning into a salesman, going, "I'll go on a I'll go on a trial here and there and everywhere." What was the circumstances of that? that that's that's probably the, the way it was. I, I was, um, do you know, it's funny how football works because um, my son was due to be born around about the time the Dortmund game was coming up. Yeah. I said to Al, the manager, I said, Alex, I said, if my son's going to be born, I'm going to, I'm, I'm no coming to Germany. I, I want to see my son being born. It's, 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 he's like, no, no, listen, no problem. He said, hopefully everything goes all right, blah, blah, blah. We went to Tanad and he, 
my son was born just before we played Dundee United up at Taz and we beat them 2 1. Right. And I'd, the shackles came off me then because you're always, it was my first child, and you think, well, yeah. oh, bloody hell, everything's going to be okay. And uh, the freedom just came, <clears throat> and then we beat Dundee United, I think, 2 1 up there. And I thought, I'm, I'm back on my metal here with the game. I went to Dortmund, and uh, uh, I think we trained the night before the stadium. I thought, poor. This. Yeah, this is proper. This, you yeah, know, and you had a good team. Aye, uh, we, we did. Little, but the scary thing was when we when we played Dortmund, uh, we didn't. I didn't even know what the stadium was going to be like when it was full. And you walked out of that stadium, you thought, "Wow, this this is uh, proper." Next thing we were in the tunnel, and the Dortmund lads are coming down. I never forget this because we wore the claret and amber sort of thing. Yeah. Um, not the claret and amber. The the yeah, the golden the the, the claret strip mother and Dortmund with a with a white strip. Yeah. Or white. So I stand in that long tunnel which I know pretty well. Next thing I've turned around and I went and I never done this I turned around and I seen them all. I went big international players are coming down here, you know, and Julio came out Julio Cesar came out. It was Julio's first game to get uh, for his leg break. And he smelled brilliant. I could, oh, I could smell his aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> I've, turned, I've turned around, right, and I've been like that. Jeez, look at the size of that guy. You know? Julio Cesar. I know him well now. I thought, this guy's massive. I mean, his legs were the size of your table. You think, what wow, dear, oh dear. Anyway, I have one of the games that everything seems to go right yeah. for me. And I thought, who are you marking? Uh, well, it would have be, been so. It was myself, Billy Davis, and Jamie Dorn were in the mid midfield. I think they had Andy. Andy was their main. Andy Muller. Andy scored the, the goal that knocked us out. But my game was a bit different then. At, at that point, were you a box to box midfielder? More or less, yeah. I, and um, so, so it was a bit different. And Jamie was a kind of sitter, and myself and Billy always interchanged. But things were going right for me at that time, and it, we're giving them a wee bit of a hard time. Andy Muller scores. We beat us one 0 And I remember warming down with Billy. After the game, I said, Gee, well, I can imagine playing here every other week. This is three years. Yeah. He went, this is unbelievable, this place, isn't it? I went, incredible. I've never seen an atmosphere like it. Bear in mind, I don't know any better than Motherwell. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, then three years later, you're I, there. I end up signing. It's your home team. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're suddenly wearing the aftershave that Julio Cesar's got on. Do you know, I, I, I say to Julio that every time I meet him, I say to him, do you remember Julio? It was his first game, and he came out, he came out, and he, he was that immaculate, Julio, you know? He used to pat his hair like that when he was in the tunnel. <laughs> and, um, he, used to wear, he used to wear a shirt and tie, come out of training and that, you know? And I used to sit there, and after training, I was sweating and Vaseline and things like that. And, I was like, and the next thing I see Julio going up to the mirror and putting his tie in that one. Fixing his hair, and he just turned around and he said, Paul, see you tomorrow. No way. There you go. Never broke sweat. Yeah. And he was, he had about 60 odd cats for Brazil, that great Brazil team, and you think, these guys are proper. And that elevated you. Yeah. At a rate of knots that it was just unstoppable. Because the other good thing about it, you know, many a footballer will say, when you play against a certain level, you find out, you know, real yeah. things about yourself, yeah. how you have to, you know, maybe change, adapt, and then, Many a footballer says, but when you play with top draw footballers, yeah. suddenly you know you can yeah. you can take your own game to another yeah. level. Well, I knew I had to. Yeah, yes, yeah. I was never going to play. Tell me how that move came about then, because now we're at the point where I'm I'm looking. I'm going. Paul Lambert's touting himself about. Mm. How did that whole thing come about? Who contacted you to say, by the way, Bruce Dortmund will take you on a trial? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Rab McKinnon signed for twenty. Right, twenty Enski day. So myself and I kind of uh, spoke a lot. So I spoke to him on the phone and he was in Holland. I said, how did that move come about? How did you get that? <laughs> and he went, he went, this agent, Dutch agent, is, is got me up. And I went, do me a favour. Go and ask him to give me a call. Yeah. Anyway, he, sure enough, a guy called Torn Van Dalen, who's sadly no longer here. So mother were going to Northampton for pre-season, right? So Torn said to me, Paul, stand by your phone. Ten days, I'm going to give you a call. So I was like, I okay thinking, there's no way this guy's going to call me. Were you panicking at this point, thinking, well, where, am, where am I going, going to go? be playing? 100%, because yeah. I, I turned down Motherwell's uh, offer. offer, and uh, I turned it down, and um, 
Mullerwell going to Northampton, so I phoned Billy and I said to Billy, Billy, I'm not coming, I'm going to take a sickie. He went, what are you talking about? I said, I'm going to try my luck, here, I'm going to take a gamble. And he went, what do you mean? I said, this Dutch guy's going to phone me, he said, I said, I'm going to, I'm not coming. He went, what do I say to the manager? I said, just tell him I'm not well. So, anyway, I don't turn up for pre-season. Phone goes on the 10th day, Paul, can you jump on a plane and get to Enskiri? And, and, uh, and I'll, I'll meet you. Number one, I don't know what it looks like. Number two, I haven't a clue where Enskede is. What he told me was to get to Amsterdam and take a small flight to Amsterdam to Enskede. So I says, okay, no problem. Packs my bag and I go. Get to Amsterdam, fly to Enskede. And I walk out the, the, the arrivals and there's a guy standing there smoking away. Big guy with glasses and I went, is that him there? And he went, Paul went, yeah, yeah. He said, hello, I'm Tom Van Dalen. He says, How you, how's your flight? Fine. I went, yeah. I said, he said, jump in the car, I'll tell you what's happening. <clears throat> Jumps in the car, he said, uh, we're going to go and spend some time with PSV Eindhoven. He said, and if that doesn't work, we're going to go to Bruce Dortmund. This time I've wilted in the car. <laughs> I'm, at my, I'm at my level here, I'm at my level. Anyway, go to Eindhoven and uh, Arthur, Arthur Newman's there, uh, Luke Nealis is there, Koku's there, uh, the big, big dick advocates of the coach, right. Eindhoven. But he plays me on the wing, outside right. I scored two goals in two games for them. What? I know, I know exactly, Peter. I don't, don't look so surprised. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, on the fifth day, he comes up, he said, Paul, he said, listen, he said, um, I'm looking for a winger who's got that yes. speed. Which, Hence, when I mean, you look at your Rangers team where they had Lovenkrantz or Kinchelskis and people like that, yeah. doing all this stuff, he said, you're not a winger. I went, no, I'm not. He said, I think you're a midfield. I went, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I know you're going to boost a Dortmund. Good luck. So I get, jumps in the car with Tone. This is five days. Mother will try to figure out where I am, but I'm not answering the phone or anything. So I, I go to... Um, you're out of contract. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they're still trying to think, well, well, what's going on? Yeah. So I go to Dortmund and Tone, after about 500 cigarettes and two hours, goes to the Bruce Dortmund office. He says, Paul, he said, uh, I'm going to talk German with the general manager. Don't worry, I'll tell you exactly what's happening. So we sit there and I'm sitting just like this and Mr. Meyer is sitting across the who I know really well. And within about 20 minutes, Ton says, uh, Paul, we need to speak to you outside. I went, OK, he said, you've got to go and, go and trial here. I went, OK, he said, You've got four games to impress them, and the contract's done. He said, I'll go through it with you. So he went, yeah, there, there, that's where you get a week, that's yeah. the bonus, that's the blah, 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 that's incentives, blah, blah, blah. Right, forgive me for this part, right, because this is where this is where football fans, we can look back in history, right? right? So what are you on at Motherwell? At Motherwell, that is about, uh, I don't know, four, five, 500 pounds. Right, 500 quid plus bonuses, yeah, right? Yeah. Is this post-Bosman? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I'm trying to think of when the year Bosman was. Uh, Bosman's '96. <coughs> yeah, because John Collins was one of the John, first people John to benefit Rab, from John, it. John and Rab were one of the first ones, <coughs> and I followed suit. So right. So you're then at a situation where yeah. he's speaking yeah. to the Germans, yeah. and he's saying you've got four games to impress, yeah. and the deal, if you impress, is is that. Right? Is, and what is that? Is the uh, it was a, a lot, a, just a bit more than mother, right? Listen, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I looked at the event. Right, okay. That was the first thing from my mind, right? Because I right. knew I had to. You just get, wanted to play. I had to get a job somewhere. Yeah. So uh, travels travels with um, Walter Mast down to, um, down to Lu uh, Lubeck. I've not got any German whatsoever. Walter's not got any English whatsoever. Yeah. So I think I'm going to sit in a, ga in a car with this guy. Yeah. That's the last time I seen Ton Van Dalen. Do you know that? Is that, that right? That when he done the deal? That was that. And did he do the deal and say to you, "By the way, Paul"? This is the deal, mm. but you've got four games, and I've told them you're not a winger, you're a midfielder. They knew. They knew. They, they knew, because I played midfield against them. Perfect, right. So, <clears throat> uh, I hadn't met Otmar or anything, and I hadn't met any players. So, we, we go, myself and Walter, mass drive to uh, Lubeck, and Walter nails that autobahn. I don't think there's a speed limit. He yeah. absolutely nails it, and I think, it's a white knuckle ride, man, I'm feeling sick here. I said, this is, guy doesn't know any English, I don't know any German. Yeah. Get to the airport, 
there's a sea of black and yellow, thousands of Dortmund fans. I went, wow, dear, oh dear. And the plane's coming in from Switzerland. He said, we'll go on the tarmac and we'll meet the manager and then you can meet some of the players. Some of the players are coming back for Euro 96, which is obviously Germany win. Yeah. More time off and you'll meet them back at the training ground. So I was on the bus and the meet up man says, welcome, good luck. Hope everything goes well for you. Good luck. Go on the bus. Some of the big players are there. I sit beside them, can't sit beside them because that's not my that's seat. That's not your seat. I'm sitting four and five different seats. <laughs> this sounds like an old Scottish pub where the guys have got their seat at the <laughs> bar, doesn't it? Playing dominoes. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sitting thinking, dear, dear, how am I going to communicate? I'm thinking, if this doesn't work out, I'm going, I'm going back my tail between my legs. Yeah. No one mother will probably go at to me. Forget it. Yeah. You're, you're no signing. Or you, we don't want you. So, which is which was their total near progress to do it. So, uh, Anyway, Stephen Kloss, as everybody knows, uh, said to me, sit here, this is, this is free. <clears throat> Do this small talk, good luck, hope it goes well. Anyway, we play the game, 45 minutes, and I play centre midfield, and I do, I do all right. And then we played another 45 minutes against Hamburg, and I do all right again. Holding midfielder this uh, time? Holding. Were yeah. you surprised when he said that to you? No, because I knew I could do it. Right. I knew I could do it. And uh, he says, that's your area. If anybody goes by you, make the foul. All you need is keep that area locked in. He said, let him go and create, let him go and create, let him create, let him, you and them, you the defender. So you stop then five, ten yard passes to the creative player? That's it. Right. That's it. And they uh, read the game, basically. And I thought, right, okay. That went well. We go back to Dortmund and I train a couple of days and then I see the big callers and Weedler or whoever, a lot of the bigger guys were coming back. And uh, we go and play, and at that time it was, it was us, Bayern, Schalke, and Munchen Gladbach were the four top teams in Germany the previous year. Yeah. So they played a wee mini tournament. Their semi final was against Schalke, and Bayern played Gladbach. Schalke beat us, but the trial game was played in a neutral stadium. So I'm thinking, well, oh, Dortmund Schalke, man, three, four thousand there, it's a neutral yeah. game. I go there, it's about 30,000 there. I went, is it a trial? I mean, I'm playing in front of 30,000 here. Yeah. So anyway, it goes, we lose the game, we lose the game 2 or 3 1, but Andy Miller scores a goal. I've never seen anybody as quick as that going back around a goalkeeper. Yeah. He went round Lehman as if he wasn't there. And I thought, where did he come? Where did that speed come from? I'm not used to this type of football here. Yeah. Andy scores, we lose 3 1. We play Gladbach in the, in the third, fourth playoff. And the season starts on the following Saturday. So Dortmund have signed Paolo Sosa for 7 million. Deutschmarks at that time yeah. for Juventus who just won the Champions League the year before and that's 7 million more than you isn't it oh. <laughs> <laughs> mojos I've got here so, so, he, so Paolo signs and then, uh, Ban, I know he's got a problem with his knee at that time he did a problem with his knee at the beginning so we end up we beat I, I, I don't can't remember the score with Gladbach anyway go back to Dortmund the Thursday before or the Wednesday before the Leverkusen game by Leverkusen uh, Otmar and Michael Henke's comes up and says, um, we'd like you to sign. We know the contract's done, will you will you stay? And I went, yeah, 100%, I'll stay. So I made up my mind, see if I don't play here, yeah. I'm going to learn. And I'm That's going to it. learn. So I wrote everything every day, what I'd done, what I ate, yeah. what I trained, who trained, what we'd done. Every, every day, I never missed a day. Did what? you have to convince your family though? It's a big move. <coughs> because we never had any money, we had to go. We had, yeah. we had to go. Yeah. It, it, it was, we had to go. And um, so we, uh, I made the decision, phoned out, I said, they've asked me to do that, I'm going to sign. But even if I don't play, I said, this is going to be so difficult to play here because look at these players, they're all world class. So Thursday, Old Mark came up, he said, Paul, he said, um, just like you know, um, I'm going to play for the beginning if Paolo's no fit. Paolo's got a, a, a test in the morning, Friday morning. Turns out Paolo can't make the game. Omar throws me in. We go to play by Leverkusen, play centre of the pitch. I have a really tough first half. I'm up against a guy called Paolo Sergio, the Brazilian. Yep. He tore the backside off me. And the, the guy was coming for left to right. I didn't know any German. I didn't know what man on was, what's right, what's left, what's heading, what's. Didn't know anything. Part of the language was just way over my head. Just at that before half time, I score. So it gives me a wee bit of confidence. You scored in the. Yeah, I did. Oh. Aye, so I thought. Give me a back home. So I get to half time, and I'm sure it was Andy. I said, Andy, can you tell me what left and right is and what man on is? Just give me the 
he the, went, the basics. Basics of it, of what the football language is here, because I don't know where this guy's got. He went, right, okay, so I'll get, right, okay. We ended up losing 4-2, but the turning point of the whole thing was we played Dusseldorf on the Tuesday, and Riedler and Sosa are on the bench that night. So Sharpie's playing up front, maybe with Lars or Ibram Tanko, and the Sosa and the, and the Riedler are on the bench. I've one of the games where I could have shut my eyes and the ball went wherever I wanted it to go. And the crowd were all singing, and I thought, oh, here, I must be doing something right here. Yeah, good. But Omar makes a sub. He, make, he brings on Riedler and Sosa. So automatically, I think, well, that must be me. I've signed for Motherwell for nothing. I'm a, I'm a Bosman. Yeah, you're coming off. I'm coming off. So I start to walk. And I think, oh, it's not me. I'm not coming after they two. <laughs> yeah. Then the penny dropped. I went, you're in this team. You're never coming out of it. And that's exactly what my mindset. That, in uh, your mind? Aye. You thought that? Aye. That's a strong will to. Aye, I thought, I'm never, because I'm never getting back in this side, because look at this, this team. And I thought, that's it. I'm like, I ain't coming out of this team. And that's exactly. And I hardly missed a game. The conference, you know, did you win the league that year? No, oh, we, 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 I think Kaiser's like won it. Yeah. We finished second, I think. What about the run to the final? Oh. Was there a special game that sticks in your mind? Madrid away, Athletic Madrid was so tough, so so hard. Um, the noise was incredible. It was that noisy. The Spanish Simeone played. Yeah. Uh, Simeone played. Um, uh, Kiko played. They, they did a really good side. Pantic, who probably gave me the biggest doing I've ever had in a football pitch in a one v one situation. Yeah. Uh, Pantic was was brilliant. Uh, the noise was, they whistled, the Spanish lads whistled yes. because of the, the, the noise. That, we beat them 1 0, believe it or not, we beat them 1 0. Stefan Reuter scored. They beat us 2 1 in Dortmund and we beat them 1 0 in Madrid. But the way it worked out, they finished in 13 points and so did we. Yep. But they went through the goal, they went through top and goal difference, which meant we went to play Auxerre. I can't remember who they played. Maybe they might have played Ajax. Yeah. And they, then obviously the big one was. From a British point of view, was the Man United game. Yeah, well, which was Man United games for me. Which was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, because it it put that thing of the Man United are going to steamroll the of Dortmund and, and all that sort of stuff. Who were you up against? Schools? Uh, Roy, I think it was up against Roy in the first <laughs> game. Roy in the first. <laughs> Roy and the, but the the thing was with that game, Otmar said to me because um, obviously Ryan Giggs was playing left wing, and Otmar said to me, especially the first game. Uh, Otmar, if Stefan, I, I can't remember who was playing right wing back for us. If it was Stefan Reuter, he was he was lightning quick. Yep. He says Stefan goes, Giggs will hang out and stay out, go over and mark him. So every time, if it was Stefan, I can't remember if it was, if Stefan would go, Giggs would probably hang about there and I knew right away, go and, go and play and then we would all falter over because my United would probably look to hit him with his speed. Yeah. So that, that was my kind of role in that, that kind of game. And we beat them 1-0 in the, at, at Dortmund. And after the game, as soon as after the game, lads were played that they won, and they said, get a goal at Old Trafford, it's finished. They won't score three against us. And that's sure enough, that's what happened. Yeah. Um, what did Otmar say to you before the Champions League final? Because all, yeah. a lot of people will not know that out of all the top world-class players that are playing in a mm. Champions League final, you win man of the match. Yeah, he... he um, we trained the night before. He showed us UV playing uh, in Dortmund. He showed us things of him. And um, you don't need to be Einstein to sit and go, well, Zin is the Zanzi best player in the world. Yeah. And, the, and you look at their team Vieri, Bosic, Dale Piero, Zidane, Deschamps, yeah. Kovic, so, you, so this is you telling me there are no duds in their side? Well, <laughs> can you find one? <laughs> so uh, he, he showed us wee bats there, but I need this smacked. Ajax, I think, 4 1 in Ajax, I think. Yeah. Zidane was unbelievable. And um, we'd been, obviously, Man United. And uh, Omar, um, we'd, we'd been doing to Munich uh, the day before. And, uh, and I'd played there before against Bayern. And it always sticks in my mind the Olympic Stadium, it was like a carpet. Yes. The field was unbelievable. If, if you miscontrolled that down there or you'd had a bad pass. You weren't a footballer. Aye, it was your own fault. It wasn't the ball or the grass. So I thought, let's look at this. It's going to be unbelievable. So we done a normal we training before the game. It was always dead light. And he pulled me over. He said, Paul, he said, the only game you won, but you're 
bit of advice. He said, if you get the ball, look for the diagonal. He said, because I don't think Perutz is big at his back post. And he said, Perini is no strong at his back post either, because Perini played. Yeah. So I went, OK, no problem. We go back to the hotel, wake up in the morning, normal stuff, have breakfast and things like that. And then we, uh, I was, I was no nerves whatsoever, you know, none, none. Time to go on the bus. And Manny, Manny uh, uh, used to do our meal for us and all that and clean the boots. And a great guy, he used to, he was brilliant. And he lit up his cigarette and he says, how are you feeling, Paul? I said, Manny, I'm ready. I went, how are you? He went, I'm nervous. As soon as he said that, my stomach just went, <laughs> <laughs> I went Jesus, man, he's nervous. I go on the bus, and the lads are deadly silent. And Stefan, I go, I go sit beside Stefan, I see Stefan's knee kind of doing, going like that, you yeah. know? I went, are you all right? He went, yeah. So I said, I'm knee. He said, I'm, I'm all right. He said, but look at everybody else. And I went, right. And in my own head, I went, he's won the World Cup. He's won the World Cup. He's won Serie A. He's won Serie A. He's won the Euros. He's won the Euros. He's and there wasn't a peep at them, you know? Yeah. They get quiet. I thought, well, they're bang on it. They're bang on it. So the way the bus went into the Olympic Stadium goes into the corner. So you had to come out the bus and go on the track, the running track, and then into the, the tunnel dressing rooms. And I swear to God, we went there, and it was half yellow, black, full. The stadium was full. Bear in mind, this would be an hour and a half before the game. Yep. And all black and white. The stadium was full. And then and they're... The the orchestra is the Hearson anthem, yep. the Champions League anthem, and they, they're bit, and the yellow and black flags are going there, and the black and white are going there. And it was jumping absolutely. And I went, wow, this is proper. Went to the dressing room, and all my done his normal stuff, and then the two teams come, and then we take the mascot, and at that point, the Livio. Uh, I never really looked at anybody who I played against. I knew I was, I was going to come up against Zidane. I knew, the thing that struck me with, with Zidane was how big he was. Yeah. And I knew he could glide. He had that glide. That brilliant, Great skill in the foot, didn't he? Aye. He had a brilliant glide. And, um, but De Levo had a big ink thing on his hand, you know? And I thought, what? what's he got on his hand? And he's turned his, his hand around it and it said 3-1. In, in numbers, you know? Yeah. So I said to him, I said to Powell, I said, what's he got in his hand? He went, he does sometimes like predict, try to predict scores for big games. Wow. And he had 3 1. He was right with 3 1 because it, it was 3 1 for us <laughs> at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly trying to wash the ink off. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we took the mask off and we went to it and it was just, the noise was just deafening. I thought, because you walk by the trophy, don't you? You walk by yeah. it. I thought, please, if there's, if there's one game you need to perform, you have to perform here. Yeah. But I knew my role, and I met Zidane a few years after, and I had a laugh, kind of laugh and a joke about this whole thing, because I think that killed Juventus at that time. Yes. Because absol- I think they were, they were so good at that point. They were, they were a brilliant side and brilliant players, but that game, I thought we deserved to win because of what we had. Did he acknowledge the job you'd done on him when you met him? We, we, I met him in Madrid. Yeah. I met him in, when he was a... Uh, so Carlo was uh, the coach of Real Madrid, and... Uh, Zidane was the, the, the under-23s, or the B team, as they call it over there, yeah. coach, and uh, we got introduced, and he put his hand in his head and just laughed and shook his hand, and the game was just unbelievable, that, because they couldn't believe it, they couldn't believe that they lost it. And <clears throat> family would have been there, mm. what's it like, oh, you're lifting the European Cup, can you believe that you're part of, you know, you're 97, and I'm looking back and thinking to myself, well, you know, it's a John, it's a, it's a John McGovern, it's mm. a John Robertson, it's a Kenny Dalglish, it's an yeah. Alan Hansen, it's a Sunnis, it's the Lisbon Lions. Yeah. There's not too many Scots. No, and obviously Andy's done it. Andy's done it since Andy Andy Robertson, which is which is great. So it, you're right, and I think that's that's the biggest achievement when you think. Well, I was born in Duke Street, Glasgow, Oswald. My mum and dad are from Glasgow, stone stone throw from from Celtic Park. He lived there. You're right, there's not too many when you think, do you know what, Champions League final or win it, it's, it's incredible. For a Scottish person, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we were all proud of you at the time as well, which is magic, and uh, and your family must have been thinking, wow, this is unbelievable. 
if, that, if that's the high, I can, mm. I, at that point, because I, I can remember, because obviously, you know, um, I think I just got to, to, to know you before actually, that. Yeah. But I, I actually, I'm saying to myself, just stay. Yeah. Just play for Borussia Dortmund. You're yeah. a Champions League winner. Yeah. You know, you could go on to even greater heights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ho is it just homesick? It's just you've got to come home? No, we... Uh, dear, oh dear. So, so after, the, after the final, uh, I had calls coming in everywhere in Europe. Teams wanted to sign me. And um, I always said no. I didn't, I didn't need to go. The, the, the people loved me here, the, the, the club did, the, the, everybody was really nice in Dortmund for me, they, were, they didn't want me to go. And we started to see no, no problem, no problem. Then my son took a thing called, uh, well I think it's called, uh, free bio convulsions. Right. I didn't know what that was, you know. And what it was was when babies or kids kind of control their temperature. Yeah. And the first time I'd seen this I thought, hey, he looks as if he's, he's a goner here. Yeah. Because we opened his eyes, eyes weren't there one time. He was only a baby at the time. I thought, what the? What's, what's happening? What's going on? So I phoned the ambulance. This, this happened when I was in Scotland, this. And uh, when I was with Motherwell. And uh, I thought, what, what is this? So we took him to the hospital and they told us, this is what we think he's got. And I said, well, what does it mean? He said, well, if his temperature gets too high, he can't control it. They might go unconscious for a wee bit. And then they'll come out of it. And I thought, well, Unconscious, well, what we might be doing that unconsciousness. So, first time I seen it, I thought, ah, oh, this is this is horrific. This. We, we thought we got over it. Anyway, I had a right few times in Germany. I thought, this is getting worse. This, yeah. this is getting worse. And, and, and it, happened, it happened in a shop, it happened in the street, and you think, this is no, no good. This, this is really good. unsettling. Ah, yeah. That was terrible. And um, so, I know kids can get it, and it's the first time I'd seen it. So, when we, we tried to um, uh, think, well, we'll be staying in Dortmund, and I had to tell Dortmund, wasn't it? And to be fair, the club, they'd done everything for me to stay. And the last game was against Parma, and uh, the club said, Paul, isn't, we've reluctantly let you, let you go back, but you need to tell the fans you're leaving. And I went, so did, if you did an interview on the TV, and, and I went, oh, no. Anyway, told the fans I was sorry, and, I had, to, I had to go back and uh, so I was, all, I was a bit Neville Scala was a coach at this time yeah. Neville was great and he he said probably understand it he said don't want you to go and, uh, anyway played Parma and Parma had a great team at that time uh, uh, Turam uh, Dino Baggio uh, Cannavaro Benarivo Buffon was a goalkeeper <laughs> we beat them 2-0 <clears throat> Andy, I think Andy scores two. We get a penalty. And the crowd starts singing my name, we hit it. And I go, there's no way I'm hitting this penalty. We need to we need a win here. We yes. need to get the result. Andy takes it. We win 2-0. So it's about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes before the game. I don't know how the fans are going to react, you know. But the PR guy says, Paul, you made this kind of banner thing. Can you take it in the warm-up and say thanks very much? To the fans, yeah. I took this banner out and they all clapped and, and cheered and things like that. And I thought, well, that that'll be the end of it. But ten minutes before the end of the game, I heard my name getting sung. You know, sung. You know, that. Is that? Are they saying something bad about me? Or are they? Are yeah. They saying anyway. That's it. Went on. Paul Lambert, and, and it came goodbye, Paul Lambert, goodbye, sort of thing. And wow. he made that song. I thought. And they wouldn't stop it for about 10 minutes. So the final whistle goes and the whole stadium started to sing it. I thought, jeez. Anyway, so I'd done a kind of lap on her. And I get to the, the yellow wall, as, as younger people know it now, but I, I called it the Sioux Tribune. Yeah. The next thing, though, I could see people crying in the, in the Sioux Tribune. I went, oh, this is terrible. My heart was just going and going and going too heavy. And I thought, I can't stand here and watch this. this, is, this is, and then banners went up saying, thanks Paul for everything, good luck in Glasgow. And then he started to sing Walk On. The Dortmund fans, I thought, yeah. Because that was our anthem. Yes. The Walk On was the anthem as well. So I, so I stood and watched that and I thought, I'm getting a tear here. I need to go in. I need to go back in. Anyway, I goes back in and the PR guy comes and says, Paul, you need to go back out. Nobody's leaving. You need to go back out and say goodbye again. I went, I've just done it, Joseph. I said, yeah. He said, no, you have to go back out. I went back out and I stood in front of him again. 
and it just exploded again, and they were crying. I goes back after in the dressing room. We weren't too now, and I had to go and sign release papers at midnight before yep. midnight to come to Celtic. So I goes and see Mr. Meyer, and he puts the paper in front of me. It says, "Don't go." And I went, Mr. Meyer, I know. So, do you know what, Mr. Meyer? I'm not a clue what I'm doing here. I'm all over the place. He said, "Don't go." He said. We can give you more money. It's, it's, no, it's, it's no bit money. It's, yeah. This is no, this is no bit money. And he said, we'll do anything you want. And I went, no. I said, please don't put that in front of me or, or beg me to stay because I'm not that good enough for you to do that to me because I gave you what I had. And he, he went, this is so difficult. I went, I, I know. And I signed that, go back to my car, and there was hundreds of people crying at my car. And he put a drape over it saying goodbye. And I've still got it. Yeah. Put a draper that said, Thanks very much, Paul, yellow and black, goodbye, love you, sort of thing. And, and then, um, and basically that was that. And then for a, a few months, I couldn't kick my backside at Celtic because yeah. I, I was still there. You're still there. Yeah. And, and of course, you, you say you're, you, you're still there, but you, you've joined a club where you, yeah. you need to be able to kick your own backside because they're under pressure, aren't they? 100%. Do you know what? I lost my first two games at Celtic. And I knew the 10 in a row season, but. I thought, well, if I'm going to move to Dortmund, I'm going to go back. I, I, as I say, I could have went anywhere in Europe. Anywhere. I go, it's always nice as, as you get older, I think, well, do you know what? I've done something in my, in my own country. Yes. I'm a Glasgow guy, uh, normal parents, that working class, all that sort of thing. I want, to, I want to make a mark in my own country. Did you know the pressure you were under there? Did you, could you sense the pressure uh, yeah, on no, that side? Yeah, no, you, you, oh, 100%, because you knew Rangers were a good side at that time as well. So, I, but I knew a lot of the Scottish lads and I knew they had a bit about them. I didn't know the foreign lads like Henrik and Reggie and people like that, didn't really know the guys or Mark Reaper, didn't know them guys. But when I came back to Celtic, I, we lost the first two games. Vim put me on the bench against yeah. Rangers and then we lost to Motherwell. I think they were calling for Vim's head after game two. <laughs> I, no, I, I, see, the thing was, I was walking out of Parkhead in my second game at Motherwell. And this woman shouts, she said, uh, she says, Paul, she said, uh, see, before you came, you were winning games. I said, you're a bit of a jinx. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's bloody woman's right here. Because yeah. I, I was terrible. Because yeah. my mindset was still in the I couldn't shake this, what they fans had done for me. I thought, what the hell have I done? And the big turning point was Celtic got the League Cup final. Yep. And Vim took us to Cameron House. Was this Dundee United? Aye. Yeah. And I, I thought, I'm not playing well enough for him to start, me. I go to Vim's door. I said, can I have a word with you, boss? Yeah, what's the problem? I said, see if you've got any in inclination you're going to play me against the United, don't. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not playing well enough to play for you. I said, go with Morton and Craig. I think Phil, mate, I think put me with Phil. I said, don't go with me. I said, I'm not performing for you. I said, go with the guys that's got you there and go and win it. So I, he said, shut the door. He went, I'll decide that, Paul. Uh, the more I said, thanks for coming. He never played me, put me on the bench, put me on for about two minutes. And it wasn't until then I started to grasp it and go, do you know what, right, leave the emotion there. I have to leave, I have to go, I have to move. Yeah. It was time to let it go, the Dortmund thing. It was time to let it go because it was hanging over like a milestone. And then the Celtic thing kicked in. Yeah, and it kicked in, I think, significantly for the belief in the team <clears throat> was when that ball left your foot in the, yeah. in the Old Firm derby yeah. because that goal at Celtic Park... It not only lifted the roof off the fans and their belief that this was the season. Did it ripple through the side? <clears throat> a couple of things stuck in my head. We had to win. A draw was never good enough. The defeat certainly was was catastrophic for us. The ten in a row would have been long gone. The Lions legacy would have been gone. All that, all those things were in the back of your mind of Jinky Johnston, John Clark, Billy McNeil, Stevie Chalmers. Jim Cray, Tommy, Ronnie, go through them, Bobby Murdoch, go through them all. Yeah. You're thinking, dear, dear, I feel all this legacy thing's gone. Yeah. So the pressure was so big and so weighing and weighing and weighing. But I thrived on it. Yeah. I thought, this, this, this is what you come for. This, this is what you come for. This is what you come for the crowd for. And you think, yeah, I'm, I'm having some of this. Yeah. You thought, we have to win this game. Craig scores a brilliant goal. Jackie puts a brilliant reverse pass into him. And, the, and Craig scores. And then obviously I had the second one that as soon as it left my foot, I thought, I don't think Andy's getting it. And yeah. 
And that was a game, I think. I, th I don't think we lost many games after that, Peter. No. In, in the running. I think we only lost one, and that was to Rangers at Ibrox in the, the last one. Yeah. I think we only lost one one game, and that was, but I think the Parkhead game gave everybody believe that we're going to go and get this. Yeah. Um, and and winning that title, um, obviously, you know, Henrik settles everybody's mm -hmm. nerves um, in the game against St. Johnson. You, you've played against, <clears throat> you've played with some very special mm -hmm. players. You've played against some special players. You've played with players that I think are really special. You know, you mentioned uh, Riedler and Sosa, um, yeah. Samer, yeah. Um, brilliant players. Where did Henrik rank in your in your list? Did you know how good he was? When I first came, I'd never heard him. And um, I knew they signed this lad from Sweden and, and, and the Dutch lad was Reggie. Never, never, never really knew much about Henrik. But as I got to know him, and I got to know the person and, and the type of guy he was and, and things like that. The biggest compliment I can give him, and people, people maybe outside of football will look at Larson as a brilliant goal scorer, but, which he was. His work ethic, work ethic was, was second to none. He ran, people talked about this, this new word, didn't they, high press. Yeah. He, he was doing that years ago. Years ago, Doug Leach and, and uh, Rush were doing it. Yeah. Years ago, it's a, it's a word people invent. But if you've seen him work or Sutton or, or, or guys like that, you think they're working their backside off. That was the biggest thing for me was this guy, this guy's in the trenches with you. Yeah. But he that gold us where, just my own opinion was, is if there was ever a 1v1 chance, it was a goal. Yeah. Same as either, same as Sharpie. That's why they were elite, and that's why he was elite because he could get a goal, plus he could go and do it in Spain. He could go and date in Manchester, and he'd done it up here at a massive club. He'd done it with his national team. He, but his work ethic was, was, was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. You, you've etched yourself <clears throat> in Celtic's history then to stop the 10, mm. which is amazing. There's a tough year after that, mm. um, which was really difficult in the John Barnes mm. era. But then out of that, out of the shadows of that, suddenly you've got the Martin O'Neill era. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about great games that you played and you scored the goal um, in the 98, 97, yeah. 98 season, my God, Martin O'Neill's era starts and, and you're in a game which, yeah. it's got to be one of your best old firm games. Yeah. 6-2 against Rangers on the air off. Yeah, and you're 3-0 up in 11 minutes. I think that was a, that was a big thing, was um, a, seeing John's defence, we started the season unbelievable. I think we we were bang on it. And yeah. That, I broke a, I broke a metal tarsal. Henrik broke his leg. Henrik broke his leg. Two years, I think me and him, Henrik, were roughly at the same kind of time. Whether people say we were big players or not, whatever people's opinion, but in John's eyes, he probably thought, well, he's lost two influential players yep. in the spine of his team. It's derailed them. Yeah, and, and then it kind of thing me through there. So in John's defence, Maybe you can say that maybe he lost Lambert, he lost Larson, whatever, right? maybe. But Martin Celtic needed Martin O'Neill. 100% we needed a manager like him. We needed a manager to galvanise it, kick us up the backside, basically, and get us going. And, and uh, his first meeting was, we asked us our opinion, how did, what happened last season, 21 points, no good enough, nowhere near good enough, behind Rangers. And he says, OK, I'll keep the better ones here and I'll bring ones in to help you. And he done that. Yeah. And he, it just, him, Robbo and Wally were brilliant together and they gave you that. I remember making a tackle against West Ham in a pre-season friendly. I think it was against Paolo Di Canio in the, in the corner flag. And I swear to God, Peter, it was, it was a run of the mill tackle that anybody could have done it. And I was in the dressing room and he said, see, see you, son. I, I, looked at him and I thought, oh, he's going to give me a stick here. Yeah. He went, that was unbelievable. What a tackle that was. Okay, what? He's giving me a praise for a tackle. Yeah. I thought. But that's how good they made you feel for the smallest thing. They just went, woof, bung you right up. And they'd done that with everybody. Like certain games, it would make you feel like like Maradona. You think, well, oh, David, he's, he's making you feel. And, but we needed somebody like him. And people say that he wasn't a coach. He, Martin didn't have to, he didn't have to coach. We all knew where to go on the pitch. Yeah. But he'd coach you with his mouth yeah. at half time or or full or before the game and all that. But if somebody ever said to if a man just said to me on a, on a pitch, you go there, they go, I'm a hat. 
I must be dumb because I don't know where the hell I'm going. Yeah. Of course I knew where I was going because I was national <clears throat> player. Well, it's a classic. It's a classic line I remember Graham Souness reciting was, you know, nobody had spoken to him the week before, you know, he joined Liverpool and then eventually I think he went up to somebody like Ronnie Moran and said, nobody's spoken to me, you know, what should I do here? And he said, We've just signed you for a record fee for Middlesbrough. If you don't know what to do in the middle of the park, the game's a bogey. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> John, yeah. I think John said the same. I was talking to John Barton. He said the same. He signed for Watford. Graham Taylor played 4 4 2 and John was a winger. And he said to Liverpool, he said, Do you want to play in the wing? That's what I played. He, went, he said, Must have resigned you for something? He said, My wing, whatever. He said, You know where to go and play. Go and play. Yeah. You know, good players will go naturally because of game knowledge. Takes them where they, in relation to where the ball or the guy is. Yeah. If, if, if a man's ever said to me that, I thought, dear, oh yeah, I must be thick as two planks here because I don't understand what he's saying. Yeah. The good players will go where they go. You've won a treble. Mm. Um, he wants to do things in Europe. Yeah. You're playing against top players week in, week out. It could have been also different because of Sutton. I think if Sutton scores against Basel, he's a, he's a, he might be in the Champions yeah, League. That's right. And then you drop down to. Um, effectively the UEFA Cup um, it's a special run is there a game that sticks in your mind that you think in the UEFA Cup the, the run to Seville yeah I thought Stuttgart was tough 3-1 game at Park I gave us a wee bit of breathing space but I knew that from playing against them overall that it would be really tough I know we lost we lost 3-2 but I think we, we get through yeah you threw nothing up in that game I, in Germany I know and you think <laughs> And they come back at you, well guns blazing, and you think, Phew. it was a tough, tough night, that, but we eventually get there. Bo Vista was a horrible game, yeah. away, away from home. I always think, I know Henry scores a goal, but without Bobo that night or that day in Bo Vista, I don't think we'd have done it, because yeah. Bobo was fantastic. He had everything that came into the box that night, and he was brilliant um, that night, even though Henry gets a goal. Liverpool nights were great. Do you know, it was funny, I was with John Robertson last Thursday and uh, a few of the older Knotts Forest lads, you know, and uh, Rob made a brilliant point and he went, do you know something, Lambo, he says, uh, and I'll go, I'll always say it. He said, that 2003 team could easily have handled England coming into the Premier League. I thought, you're right. Yeah. Because they were a good side. Oh. And they were strong, they had power, they had speed, they had guile, they had all the attributes a right good side they've, they've turned over Liverpool twice or well with over two games Blackburn, Blackburn beat Blackburn. Arsenal the week before that's right so they've turned them over that Celtic era without a shadow of a doubt would have handled going down to England yeah um, is, if the ultimate high is the, the Olympic Stadium you're playing in the mm. Champions League final how painful is Porto yeah. I know you haven't watched it but what's your recollection of the, of the game and and the significant moments that turn it against you. Yeah. The first thing that sticks my mind is um, I remember training on it and I thought, this pitch ain't great. This is my own mindset. Yeah. I thought, this, this has been relayed. This is no great enough for a European final. Was it soft underfoot? It, it was coming up. Giving away, yeah. It was coming up. And I yeah. thought, the, 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 the grass hadn't knitted together. You could see the, the lines in it. And I thought, this, this ain't great. And I thought, I hope they water this because this, this ball is going to be sticky. And I looked at the stadium and I thought, the stadium's not big enough. It's not big enough for the support, Celtic support. And I thought it was proven right on the two. The pitch wasn't great. The, the stadium certainly wasn't big enough to hold that Celtic support. Yep. Celtic, you, needed, you needed a bigger stadium for that. Because if you remember the portal end was only a wee bit of blue and white. Yep. And if you looked around that whole stadium, that was a mass of green and white. And you thought, there's thousands outside trying to get in. And you think, for a European final, this isn't big enough. But as the Olympic Stadium, I thought, this is, this is going to be proper here. Yeah. But that stadium, I thought, it's not big enough. And did we fall short? Yeah, we did. Did Bobo send an off? Hinder us? Might have done, might not have done. What, where you, you look at the other side, it is, you're up against a, um, a really good portal side when you look at it, won the Champions League the year after. Yeah. You're up against a manager who became one of the greatest managers, probably still is, in, in the game to date, in Josie. You look at their team, they became household names with, with what they'd done. Would we have done the same if, if we were running 3 2 and roll about for about five minutes and take our time yeah. to go and get the ball? Of course we would have. Still enough about Vitor Bayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Not that you hold a grudge. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? But yeah. we'd have done the same. They, they, they were cute. They, they were, they were cute. But I always think, see the Portuguese teams and the Spanish teams, I think they're, they're tough to play against. Yeah, so is that your lowest point ever? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. That's my biggest regret in football is, lo is losing that. Biggest yeah. regret ever. Just before we finish then, um, we've talked about the club career and, and, and you as a footballer. Um, international football. Mm. Um, you worked for a few managers. What was the, what was the, what was the high for you? I think... Phew. I think it, going to the World Cup was 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 it's a you, you asked me earlier on about Scottish people achieving things in the game. There's no two. Well, earlier it was the last time we get to a World Cup. Yeah. Hopefully the guys now can do it because they're in a good place, and then and they'll hopefully they'll qualify for Euros. But the World Cup is the one you want to get to because that just overtakes a lot of stuff. And to get there, where where we were a nation that was qualifying. For every tournament uh, under the eighties era and Kenny's era and Graham's era and all them guys that you think well Scotland's got a history of progress into the World Cup finals and all of a sudden twenty odd years later it's still not there. Yeah, uh, which is a shame. But going to the World Cup finals, oh, that was that was uh, that was proper. And to, if you're not going to win it, you may as well play against Brazil <laughs> and, and the team that they <laughs> the team that they had and we were. That close, yeah. For getting the result. Did you feel? Did you play well that day? Did you feel as if you played well? Yeah, I yeah. thought we'd done. I thought we'd. I thought we'd a good game. It, it, it was like Craig said. He's trying to concede after twenty minutes or something. We're doing one. They left or eight. <laughs> and and uh, but we find our feet. We actually find our feet and we get the goal. And then um, John scores a penalty. And then obviously the one. I mean, one. If that see if the ball hits Boydie's chest. Yeah. I think it falls into Big Jim's hands because it hits the corner. And his shoulder blade it takes it. It takes the power, yeah. it takes the power and it, it goes in. But uh, people, I think they're one and two. When we get a free kick, obviously just outside the box, John hits it. One of them jump up with their hand and it hits his hand. And that time the referee never gave it. If you'd VAR, you'd probably get it. You get a draw. You'd, yeah, you'd make the, yeah. they, they'd turn the screw and scoop you about five or six. But but Ronaldo and that, and, you, and I, remember, <laughs> I remember Ronaldo had the, I'm sure his boots were on grease before he, because he'd done a step over that it must have been honestly 45 step overs in a millisecond. <laughs> Colin Henry's in the corner flag and I went, Colin, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were, oh, they, they speed his feet. You thought, yeah. But that was a brilliant tournament. And we we battered Norway and should have, be, should have beaten them. We absolutely battered them. Yep. And they were time wasting. They were, the heat, they couldn't handle the this heat. This was Bully's goal, goal, wasn't it? Yeah, Craig's yeah. goal, yeah. yeah. The game of let us down was Morocco. Yeah. They, they, they deserve to beat us. Yeah. Um, listen, it's been an absolute joy uh, whistling through uh, the career. We could probably have done another hour uh, of your career. Um, as, you, as you look back on it, um, what's your overall summation of of playing football? I mean, I, I, you automatically mentioned there, uh, and of course we're at the opening game of the World Cup, you're walking out to, to a stadium. Yeah. You're walking out Olympic Stadium. You're walking out to something unbelievable. You're, you've mentioned Seville. Yeah. Your whole game, your whole career has been littered with walking out to unbelievable stadiums yeah, with great support. But how do you look back on it, and do you reflect at any point and think of those games with? Is there a wee moment where you allow yourself the nostalgia? Probably not. If the truth be known, I don't think it was. Uh, I think I was fortunate to, to have done what I've done. I'm proud of what I've done. Come from Glasgow. Yeah, and we're proud to be kind of Glaswegian and, and being in that band where the Champions League does put you in that plinth of, yeah, it's a hell of an achievement to have done it come for Glasgow um, with that. But I would say, could I handle my own in any 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 environment? Yeah, absolutely. I had no fear against anybody. But I'd probably look back on it and say, well, probably done all right. Yeah. Done all right. I think you've I think you're understating it. Paul Lambert, an absolute Pleasure. joy. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you.